Today we're going to go over the D-Ball D2 from Steiner. This is a multi-aiming laser and illuminator device. The D-Ball D2, right now the price is right around the $1,500 mark. Sometimes higher in the used market you can get it a little lower. But that's about the price you're going to expect for it. There are cheaper usable options out there like the Steiner D-Ball i2. I recommend the 9007. That is going to be an IR illuminator, an IR laser. There are other ones that are Viz laser, IR laser. I don't really recommend those ones. Um, but the unfortunate thing is Steiner has discontinued the D-Ball i2 9007 so when going to look for an affordable IR aiming laser and illuminator it can be tough there are other options out there around the same price as this but I think this you're getting the best value for your dollar you're getting better performance than a laser based illuminator on those civilian models like the at PLC um, its laser based illuminator is a very dim petri dish and it is non focusable with this you have an LED based illuminator that is very powerful you're going to get good performance out of this but there are some caveats to that performance that we will talk about First thing we'll go over is its construction. You're going to get a metal housing, very sturdy aluminum housing. You're not going to have any issues with the housing itself. And next we'll go into the features. So we'll start out front. You have dual aiming lasers. You have a visible and an IR laser. The visible laser really isn't useful in many case scenarios. Um, the best one for a civilian is going to be in this unit you have a slaved laser system so the IR and the visible laser are slaved together so if you sight in your your visible laser your IR laser is going to be sighted in as well so that is your your biggest pro to having a vis laser um, you can use a gas mask with a laser, it works out well. But other than that, you're not really going to get much use out of a Viz laser. But it helps with actually zeroing your system. Moving directly over, you have your battery cap. I haven't personally had any issues with this battery cap. I know on some of the D-Ball i2 devices, uh, people have been having issues with the battery cap housing completely pulling out. I haven't had any issues with my i2-9007 or my other D-Ball D2, which we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but I guess the problem is there and enough for people to bring it up. But again, I haven't had any issues. It takes CR-123A batteries, pretty common battery. Uh, I haven't had any issues with those as well. Then moving over from that, you have your illuminator. This illuminator is very powerful. It is focusable. It does have a range of throw. Some people make fun of, you know, the devices like this being that you have to turn it to get the specifics that you want. But it isn't as long as some other devices. It's quick throw. You can really get down on it and you've made it to where you need to go. Um, same with the laser. The uh, IR Illuminator has a cover. There is a company out there, which I will throw some B-roll in there, that makes a diffuser cap that makes this even more usable. So you could keep your IR Illuminator on its tightest beam pattern for the farthest throw and then have that cover on it. You can have it open for throw clip it up you'll have it a nice wide diffused beam <sighs> sorry 
And that diffuse beam is going to be good for indoor use and close-up work. As you can see, being IR LED, you've got a pretty big body right here. That's where one of those caveats come in. So you do have a really high power LED based illuminator, but you got a big housing. I don't think it's as much as a con. I haven't had any issues with it. It doesn't slow me down any. So I wouldn't really call it much of a con, but it is there. Moving to the back of the device. All the way over here, you have a fire button. I call it a thumb fire button. Uh, obviously, you use your thumb on the top as well. But this one, some people don't like it. I actually prefer it. It works really well. Um, my thumb on my, uh, my rifle rests about right here on the device. It allows me to move down to move my switch and reach over for the button to fire. I can't really, I can't really distinguish any cons out of it. I like it. Like I said, um, moving over from the fire button, you have your switch. So we'll go over all of the functions. If you move straight down, you have visible laser high. It is pretty darn bright. Um, and it would be usable in a lot of settings, including a lot of daylight settings. From there, you have visible low. It's a nice tame laser. Would work really good in, in darker situations. Uh, you can even see it with a, with a high-powered weapon light, which is nice. Moving directly up is off. So this is one of the pros that I really like is that the viz the viz unit is separate from the IR units. Moving up from there, you've got IR pointer only. The IR pointer only is in low mode. Moving up from there, you have see IR pointer and illuminator low so the IR pointer at that point I believe is high and the illuminator is low moving up another click you again have IR pointer and illuminator high so now both units running high you have a high IR pointer and a high IR illuminator and then the last click is just high illuminator. I like this last function because it works really well for passive aiming. Um, a while ago, IR box was the way to, to use night vision. This was your number one solution for night vision. Um, I believe now with the Gen 3 technology that we're working with, plus the, the optics that we're working with now, Passive aiming has become a lot more viable. So when passively aiming and looking through your optic under night vision, it's good to have just an IR illuminator because sometimes your night vision might not be able to punch through a photonic barrier. So you won't be able to see on the other side of that. And IR illuminator is going to really help out with that. Same with uh, dark spaces. So if you are in a variable lighting condition, your night vision might see an area really well, but over in that corner, you might see that it's um, really shadow casted. An IR illuminator is going to help with that. So we're gonna use this shed over here to display shadow barriers and photonic barriers. Next to this shed is a bucket that is pretty hard to see even with the night vision because of the shadowing but with an illuminator you can see it great I will get right to the number one con 
it's heavier than most IR boxes. So you're looking at 12.3 ounces for this device. It's not as noticeable as I thought it would be when I first got into this device, but uh, it is there. The weight is there. Uh, there are ways around it based on how you mount the device, but I always recommend 12 o'clock, of course. But you can, if you have a long, if you have a, a longer rail and let's say you you can't you can't reach all the way out there the the rail's just too long you can bring this device back just slightly and it will uh help offset that weight a little bit moving on to another con i had a d-ball d2 before beat the living crap out of it it ran and ran and ran had no issues with it until i did so my issues with it was not that the device died because of abuse the device died because I pulled out my dual switch lead. And when I pulled it out, a lot more came out than I wanted to. The plug prolapsed. And that is another thing you'll hear about Steiner devices. Now, I will say Steiner did well by me. I RMA'd the device, I sent it in. It took a little longer than expected, but it did come back and it functioned. But the plug was never the same. It was loose. And it just didn't work like it did before. It was usable, but it wasn't as solid. This particular device, I've had for quite some time now. Um, haven't really put a lot of wear and tear onto it yet, but I haven't had the same issues. I don't know if they've updated those issues before, but uh, I haven't had it. Moving forward, another con is obviously the battery compartment. Some people have issues with it popping out and having to use tools to get it back in when changing batteries. Haven't had an issue on the last one, haven't had an issue on this one, or my 9007, the uh, D-Ball i2-9007. <laughs> and I would say those are the three main cons, man. Uh, you've got a heavier weight unit. Um, your plug might be a little more sensitive. Your battery cap might be a little more sensitive, but uh, as long as you're pulling it out straight, I don't think you're going to have an issue. And yeah, it, it's been a really great device for me. Um, feel free to, to comment below. I'll answer all the questions I can. Um, when I get my diffuser in from that one company, I will add description about the company in the description down below. But uh, once I get that in, I will do an updated short showcasing that. Um, but yeah, uh, feel free to subscribe. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching guys.